What is going on guys? Welcome to your 30th tutorial in Java game development. And now that we learn how to handle something when the user presses down a key on the keyboard, we made two other promises to our key listener um, class right here. So since we implemented from it, we said, all right, we're going to tell you how to handle key presses when they press down a button. And we're also going to tell you how to handle when they release a button. So let's go ahead and make that method right now. This is a lot easier than the last one. So let's just say key um, released, I guess. Nothing fancy. I was going to write a little description, but I'm a little lazy tonight. And the name for this method is public void, and it's key released. How cool is that? So now it takes an event as well, key event E, and the E is pretty much what button you released. So the first thing we want to do is get the key code, key code of that button, and that's equal to the event, which is the button, get key code just like that. So now key code equals the button. So what we want to do here is when you release it, we want to change the message. So this one was pressed at this. Well, let's just go ahead and copy that. And when you release it, let's just go ahead and change your method to or message, not method, to released at key event uh, get key text key code. Hmm, a little too easy. And then after that, of course, you want to take the button and eat it up so it's not waiting for another button or anything like that. So as you can see, this was a lot easier than the last one um, because it doesn't have this, you don't have to handle the escape. Since once you press down the escape, it stops and therefore you never have to wait for it to release. And the last method we need to uh, do is a method, which I should have an error right here. It says, uh, well, you'll see in a second. It's last method from interface. And this is public void key typed. Now, I'm not even going to tell you guys what this does. Key event E. Because all we're going to do is consume right there just eat it up and what this means is pretty much just handle the button and don't do anything with it this key type is pretty much useless for what we're doing right now all we want to know is when you press down a button and when you let it go you never use this key typed in games um, you never really use it anytime so that's why we're doing that so the last thing that we need to do is draw the message on our screen and remember our draw method right here has nothing in it so we need to override it and we will do this by adding a comment and public synchronized void draw and remember synchronized means uh, this method can only run and no other methods can run at the same time so graphics 2d just name it G you always name it G always and now let's go ahead and put window get our window object and set this equal to s dot get full screen window so now our window is equal to our screen and we'll just put g dot set uh, color so our drawn color now is going to be equal to the background so w dot get background and if you can't, can't remember that's green and what do we want to do now well now that we're drawing with green, let's just make a big background. So G dot fill rectangle. And if you can't remember, all a rectangle does is draw a rectangle. So where do we want it to start? Zero, zero, which is the top left of our screen. And that way it can cover everything. How wide do we want it? Uh, the width of the screen. So get width. And remember that method should be in your screen class. How tall do we want this rectangle? As tall as the screen is. So S dot get height. So we want a rectangle starting at the top left. That's as wide as the screen and tall as the screen. Easy enough. So now let's go ahead and change our color because if we draw green on green, we can't see anything. So G dot set color and we'll go the window dot get foreground just like that. And if you can't remember, the foreground of our window was white. And all we have to draw is G dot draw string. 
and I don't oh, I knew it was gonna give me all those parameters for our string what do we want to use that little message and what's the message well it starts out as nothing but when you press a button it is gonna say pressed like L and when you release it it's gonna say released L so that's what the message is that's what we're drawn uh, where do we want it let's just put it at like 30 30 or something like that so now that is our entire program and I'm gonna run this and even though you guys can't see it, I'm gonna show you guys what happens if I don't get any errors so now my screen is green and on the top left it says press press escape to exit now I'm gonna press the H button and hold it down and it says pressed H now I'm gonna release it right now and it says released H and I'm gonna press down I and hold it in and it says pressed I now I'm gonna release it and it says released I and now I'm gonna go ahead and hit the escape key right here and look at that it stops my entire program and takes me out of full screen so I make sure my screen recorder is still working and I don't think you guys need to go over this code one more time but I will just for fun now again when we extended from core we inherited all the methods and uh, public variables from core so now we have access to all of these even though you can't see them then we implemented key listener and we did this because this is the only way you can accept input from a keyboard um, some important things we did is we call the superclasses initialization function which is this class um, we set the window to the key listener which means whenever something happens on my window this is what I want to listen for so whenever you press a key uh, that's just you need to add a listener to something and then we needed to uh, um, make three methods from the key listener class and those were key pressed and this is how you handle a key when they press it down this is key released and this is when they finally re let go of that key what do you want to do and key typed is not important we're never going to use it and the last thing that we did is we drew a message on our screen and that message was dependent on whether we press down a button or whether we release the button so that's how you do that those are the basics to how to handle keystrokes and key releases from the user so now what can you do with this and why would it be useful in a game for example if they typed in their name or if they use the right left up or down to jump and move around the character or if they even use the keyboard keys to move around the character this is how you would do that so for now I just want to thank you guys for watching in the next tutorial we're going to be going over how to get input from the mouse instead of just the keyboard because once we have our keyboard and mouse then the world is pretty much open to us so for now I just want to thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next tutorial